Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another RK's voice acting. Today I have to try something very different than what I'm used to. For those of you who've been subscribed for a while to the channel, you know the pattern. I pick an actor, I explore a bit of his journey into becoming a voice actor, what the highlights are and then I show you most of his roles. And so far, I think it works. Let me know in the comments if it doesn't. I fully intended for this video to be similar to its predecessors and I wanted to cover the voice of Carly. I think Carly played an important part in the season 2 of the Transformers and I wanted to pay homage to her voice. Then I realized that her actress, Arlene Bannis, had very little roles in voice acting. Then I look into other female characters of the Transformers, such as Alita 1 and her crew, which returned similar results. When I probed a little further, I found that of the other voice actresses who worked on the show, some played memorable characters and had short careers, and others played completely forgettable characters but turned out to have long careers and are working even today. It was then that I told myself, what the hell, let's do something different. Therefore, I've assembled for you this medley of actresses that made the cartoon so much more interesting. But before we start, I just want to mention that I've researched my usual sources, but some of those actresses were classically trained. So if I didn't find them in on-screen or voice acting roles, that doesn't mean that they didn't have a great career on stage. Also, this is again a case of conflicting information source. Some of them listed with many roles, while other sources have a couple entries. I hope in the end I won't be too far off the mark. I will omit Susan Blue from this collage of stars since I've covered her fully in a previous spotlight. On with the show. My first spotlight is Arlene Bannis, the voice of Carly, who did a couple TV series and movies. Starting voice acting in Chicago, she eventually met Wally Burr and got hired to do voices for the Transformers. Her first credited role is Alice Morgan in the movie The Psychic in 1968. She did a bit of acting in TV series like The Fisher Family, It Is Enough and Dynasty, also having small recurring roles in the Colby's as Sharon and played in the movie Pizza Man, but also playing in the soap opera Days of Our Life as Chelsea. Her first credited voice work is for the series Robotech doing additional voices, but her first role was Lena in the TV movie Codename Robotech. She then played Carly in the Transformers, one of the best human characters from that era. Maybe if I can tie into the computer, we can control the space bridge from here. In season 3 she kept the role of Carly and also voicing Allegra. Very well. Stand by to receive the harmony. And Inara. What a darling post-embryonic form! She did a lot of additional voices for Japanese animation dub as in Bastard and Street Fighter 2, but did get character roles in August 2 as Sil and Seple, and also took the lead as Sume in Technoman. She also played Upa and Arali Norimaki in the Dragon Ball Mystical Adventure TV movie. My second spotlight goes to Marlene Aragon, who was the voice of Elita One. She was once dubbed the Willow Trush by Variety magazine. She's a versatile artist who sang and acted in jazz clubs, theaters, film and television. Her work includes TV commercials, voiceovers and narration. She's credited mainly as additional voice, which is common in the business. For many shows such as Jenna of the Jungle, The Plastic Man Comedy Adventure Show, Captain Cavern, The Quicky Koala Show, the Fonz and the Happy Days Gang, and the Smurfs. She did get a few guest starring name roles, as in Challenge of the Super Friends, where you heard her as Cheetah. She was the Wicked Witch in the world's greatest Super Friends, as well as Lioness in the Super Globetrotters, and Maya on Tondar the Barbarian. But some roles she did are icons to be remembered. She is Alita One, a one-shot character that became a fan favorite even to this day. Welcome back, Autobots. Congratulations on a mission well done. And Marlene will always be the voice of the iconic Synergy from Gem, while also providing voices for various guest characters. For spotlight number three, I took a look at Elita's younger self, Ariel. Don't listen to him. He's just the jealous type. And also the voice of Elise Presser in Bot. Oh, Mr. Robbins just told me we're supposed to work together. Meet Samantha Newark, who of course is well known for voicing Gem, and Jerrica on the well-remembered show Gem. She even had a cameo as a hairstylist in the live-action movie Gem and the Holograms. Now I don't know if the following fact is ironic or sad, but she was not the singing voice for the show Gem, even if she had been a singer since age 7 with her first single Jimmy Jimbo. At age 10, when she and her family emigrated from South Africa to America, she was cast in the State Fair circuit, opening for Eddie Rabbit, Pat and Debbie Boone, and Mac Davis. 
Later, she was the title role in the United States Navy band production of the musical Annie and did many other musicals and various TV spots. After a long career in music, she released her first self-titled album in 2008, whose song got featured on shows such as Smallville, Reba, Gossip Girl, and Punk. In 2011, she released the album Something Good, and her latest release is called Hologram, described as a love letter to her many devoted gem fans. Spotlight number four goes to Morgan Lofting, who started in voice acting as Princess Nvidia from the show Starblazer, then as Aunt May and Black Cat on 1981's Spider-Man, to working on the Transformers voicing Firestar, That's all down the hatch. and Moonracer. Look at that! But I think we can all agree she'll always be remembered for her role as Baroness in G.I. Joe, a role she also reprised for the movie. That's a role beloved by fans to this day, a character no one will ever forget. She was absent from acting from 1996 to 2012 until she played the part of Fistina and Yita on Ben 10 Omniverse. She also did a bit of on-screen acting in TV movies and series such as Street Hawk, Hotel, The Judge, and Knott's Landing, landing the short recurring role of Mrs. Whitehead. Number 5 is Linda Gary which for some reason is not listed for named roles on the Transformers, only referred to as additional voices. So I had to dig a bit and found that she is the voice of many named characters such as Chromia, Firestar, Moonracer, Stand Back, Alana, a temporary measure for fighting Decepticons, but I do think I picked a nice color, don't you? Astoria, I know you're all totally grossed out to be here, but it's my birthday, so I'm going to have a party. Nancy, which is a terrible name for a robot, even for Junkion. Oh, see school. Talaria. Jaro, your sky gods are an excuse for high taxes and harsh laws. And Nimu. Just wonderful, Sir Spike. Take this. Thou shalt be my champion on the field of honor. But this actress is mostly remembered for her countless roles in Masters of the Universe, voicing throughout the franchise the characters of Tila, Sorceress, Evil Lynn, Queen Marlena, Glimmer, Madame Raz, Shadow Weaver, and voicing over 70 other women, girls, and little boys. She was also involved in shows like Tailspin, Batman the Animated Series, 1994 Spider Man as Aunt May, and the Land Before Time franchise. Before I present you my last spotlight, I have two honorable mentions. The first goes to the voice of Jessica Morgan, whose role in the show was instrumental in the demise of the Transformers that led to the revival of Optimus Prime. Dad, don't encourage Gregory to celebrate yet. We still need to test closer to the sun. She was voiced by Joy Gurdnick, who had a short career in voice acting on shows like The Dukes and The Smurfs. The second goes to Mono Marshall, who played two completely forgettable characters on the Transformers, being Aaron Ow! That wasn't very nice! and Prince Jumal. No matter what you're made of, you'll always be a Rolls Royce to me. She spun a huge career to this day containing 379 roles from 199 titles. Shout out to her 112 roles on South Park. I might have to cover her individually someday. I wish I had discovered this earlier in the process of my script writing. My last spotlight goes to Michelle Chain, who did the voice of Red Alert. Not so fast, Inferno. I need backup. Hoist. The tools on Cybertron were vastly superior. Power Glide. Almost, Iron Hide. Load me up, Grapple. Skids. Spotted Insecticide. And Raul. I don't know who used to own you, but you're mine now. Dad, that's a guy. What? No, look at the 80s hair. Look at the 80s pinch. Ah oh, man, the hair was so lush and big, I, it, I didn't look at the rest. And the name Michelle is for a guy, so it's confusing. It's Michael, not Michelle. Screw it, he stays. Those are his only voice acting roles. And Michael only had a couple on-screen roles on shows like 1963's The Twilight Zone and Different Stroke. But he also had a short writing career, writing for shows including She-Ra, Princess of Power, Punky Brewster, Rambo, and the Police Academy series. One thing I took away from doing this video is that not everyone needs a long career in voice acting to be remembered. Some of the characters presented today are legends in the cartoon business and will remain fan favorites until none of us are left to talk about it. I sincerely hope that all those peoples found work in other mediums, which is often the case, and had good life. And this being said, I recalled something Susan Blue had said 
that there wasn't that many roles in the past for women. I do hope that has changed over time since there's a lot more female protagonists in cartoons these days. And I wish the next generation of voice actresses the best of luck. Some of those are already legends in my book. I hope you've enjoyed the brief overview of those actresses' career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment. I love reading you guys. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!